Welcome to Talk Across America. I'm Doug Miles, and we're here in beautiful Sarasota, Florida. Joining us now, great to welcome one of the uh, co-authors, a very interesting and uh, helpful book, I'm sure, as we uh, talk uh, during Valentine's Day week. It's called The Eight Dates, Essential Conversations for a Lifetime of Love. We're joined today by Dr. Julie Schwartz uh, Gottman. Uh, she has written this book along with Dr. John Gottman and uh, about how we can uh, communicate better. She joined us by telephone today. And, uh, Doctor, good to talk with you. How are you? Hi, Doug. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I guess this is the time a year. I know you wrote the previous uh, book on the relationships about making marriage work, so this is a busy time of year for you, I imagine, right? <laughs> People coming to you for advice. <laughs> you know, every day is a busy time. <laughs> right, every day is a busy time. <laughs> Indeed. I, I guess, you know, if you, if you, you know, you know, see what's going on in the world with uh, you know, all these dating apps and people seem to have trouble uh, connecting, I, I guess it seems to be harder than ever nowadays to, to connect with people, right? Even if you are married, uh, even those uh, conversations aren't as easy as maybe they used to be. So it, it seems to be harder now than it used to be. Is that right? Well, you know, I think it's always been hard, but you're right, Doug. It is really hard because we're working harder than ever. We are worried sometimes, and uh, we're really struggling to find time for our relationships. And that's part of why we wrote this book, Eight Dates, because we knew that couples were losing connection with one another, and the couples who were first meeting didn't know what to talk about that really were the bigger topics that were really important to choosing a good partner for a lifetime. So this book helps both new couples and couples who've been together for a long time by really kindling your curiosity and allowing you to see who is this person that I'm sitting with here and now. You kind of make a point there, you're talking with each other, and I see people not necessarily, you know, one particular, I guess younger people more maybe than older, but not necessarily most people now just spend all their time looking at their phone. They're not talking to each other. So I guess that's another issue, right? <laughs> Learning how to talk to somebody looking at them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right. You know, a lot of people are caught up on their screens or on their phones, and they forget that somebody is actually sitting at the table across from them, and they have the opportunity for a much deeper connection with that person. So put away the phones, put away the tablets when you go on the dates in the book so you can have conversations that can be really satisfying for you and fulfilling. Yeah, I guess in a sense, people have to learn or be taught maybe to uh, have conversations again, right? Because uh, you're not really taught that in school, <laughs> from what I've heard. Uh, so that, that, that's one thing you got to overcome. Yeah. Right? Look at the person in the eye and just talk. That's, that's not easy for, I guess, a lot of people nowadays. Yeah, you know, that's really true. And none of us took relationships one-on-one in high school, right? Right, right. So conversations are a are a fine art, and what we are doing here is helping people by giving people specific questions about really important topics to ask each other and then to really listen to each other's answers. So things like, you know, what is trust and commitment? What do they mean to you? How were you shown trust and commitment existed in your family or maybe didn't exist? And how about sex and intimacy? What is it that you would really like in the bedroom? What kind of touch do you like? And how can I maybe refuse having sex with you without crushing your soul? Questions like that people have a really hard time talking about. So we give people the specific questions to address when they go out on their dates to really understand the heart of who this person is they're with. And you really kind of break it down, uh, like you said, with the questions, but, but almost like the uh, the atmosphere you should set up to bring these up as well. I and mean, that's important, isn't it? You don't want to just do it maybe in the car. You want to do it yeah, in a quiet place. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yep. So we give you all kinds of fun ideas for the uh, setting conditions to have each date. For example, John and I used to go out on dates when we didn't have much money. We would go to this beautiful hotel with a beautiful fireplace, and we'd grab a couch. We would pretend we were guests. We'd order one drink, and we'd talk for four hours. <laughs> it was the perfect date. 
I, I wonder today, uh, I mean, you know, dating is, is different than I guess even five, ten years ago. Uh, the, the young people, I'm talking college age, you know, mar early marriage age, do they still date like uh, maybe the previous generation? I don't know. I'm a little older than that. I'm not out of the woods, but I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's different today, isn't it, where people go to date? Well, you know, in some ways it is, but we've got lots and lots of people at least setting up dates right. online and then going out on a date um, and seeing whether or not there's some magic there. And, of course, you know, what we're really talking about is chemistry at first. And there may be, there may be sparks or maybe not. We're oftentimes attracted to people who are very different from us. And that's good. That's fine. Disagreements are fine. Differences are fine. It's how you talk about those that matter. And that's part of what this book helps with, too. And I know in your research with uh, also Dr. John Gottman, uh, in the previous book as well, you, you've done so much, talked to so many different people, you can almost tell, I guess, nowadays, uh, whether the couple has a chance, right? Just by the way they communicate early on or not communicate, right? So you, you, you can put a, good, put, a, put a good accuracy. Yes, that's correct. So we've done research with over 3,000 couples, <laughs> watching them a hundredth of a second by a hundredth of a second. How do they talk about disagreements? How do they talk about their events of the day? How do they spend their day? And analyzing all that data has given us the ability to predict with 90% accuracy whether a couple will stay together happily, unhappily, or maybe end up splitting up. And what couples need to do to have successful relationships. And again, uh, like you said, these eight different uh, dates, we talked about a couple, trust and commitment, uh, intimacy is one, uh, uh, growth and spirituality, that's, that's an important one nowadays, that always has been, but uh, how you grow together, right, in, uh, in your life and in your spiritual life, that's important, isn't it? You know, you're so right. It's very, very important. And, of course, when you've been together for decades, there are changes that happen in your belief system, in your own spirituality, in what you consider sacred, special, and meaningful. And it's so important to stay in touch with your partner about how they're evolving and changing over time regarding spirituality and their own personal growth. Mm. That's a part of what the chapter really addresses and guide you to have a conversation about that with your partner. Are you optimistic, Doctor? I mean, uh, you, know, you hear statistics how marriages, I guess, one in two now, maybe even maybe even less than that, uh, make it. I don't know what the statistics are now. It used to be one in two uh, in a divorce. Uh, are, are people uh, people optimistic about getting together nowadays from your research? And uh, I hope so. You know, they still continue to be hopeful and optimistic, and actually, the divorce statistic is going down a little bit. Oh, it's good. a little bit less than 50% now. Hooray, hooray. Yeah, hooray. And also, what we're seeing is that couples are hungry for knowledge about how to have successful relationships, and that's part of why we wrote this book, Eight Dates. Essential Conversations for a Lifetime of Love, Eight Dates, is the full title of the book. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Julie uh, Gottman today. And, uh, Doctor, do you have a website you want to give out? People get more information about the book? Sure. Uh, so the website is www.gottman.com, G-O-T-T-M-A-N. And the book can be found online and in bookstores all across the country. Great. We'll also put a link on our website as well. But, Doctor, pleasure talking to you. You're doing great work with your husband there, and uh, hopefully people will get together more and uh, we'll have a lot less uh, trouble in the courtrooms, the divorce courts, right? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Amen to that. And uh, Valentine's Day, <laughs> we, wish, we wish everybody Thank finds so somebody. Much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today on Talk Across America. Please visit our website at DougMilesMedia.com for more great interviews and content. And if you're interested in any of the books we talk about on the program, please click the Amazon link on our website. It helps support the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again real soon here from beautiful Sarasota, Florida.
I'm Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.